Right, welcome to the course on molecular modeling. Okay, if I can dive straight in, I found an interesting diagram on the web that serves to illustrate where molecular mo modeling fits with everything. Um, so, in chemistry, we're very familiar with experiment and we are somewhat familiar with theory. So, we've got atomic theory, for example, and everything works well in terms of atoms and molecules and we find there's a very very good correlation between theory and experiment in chemistry but in experiment there is a difficulty in that we almost never can see the individual atoms individual molecules and we can almost never see physically with uh, powerful microscopes even we cannot see what's going on at the molecular level However, we can try to understand what's going on that at that level using simulation. And so I really like this diagram in terms of how experiment, simulation and theory fit together. And it's also nice to distinguish between types of chemists that you might have, or one way you can split chemists is that you might have experimental chemists, you might have theoretical chemists, and you might have, uh, within simulation, you might have computational chemists. However, when I r try to get my mind around molecular modeling and computational chemistry, I like to view it in a slightly different manner to this. Firstly, <coughs> we need to try and determine why we would do computational chemistry, why we would do molecular modeling. And sometimes it's to answer very, very simple questions. So. Uh, well, for instance, what does a molecule look like? What are the bond lengths? What the angles? What's the symmetry? But really, it's nice to have a microscopic view of the molecules we're working with in the lab in front of us. So being able to visualize and be able to see them is really, really important. However, there are other things, uh, reasons why we might be do doing computational chemistry. So we might like to explore what properties a molecule has by itself. For instance, in the lab, if you don't know um, if a, a particular compound is what you think it is, and you need to be certain, you could calculate certain properties using molecular modeling and see if it correlates to experiment. And if it does, it might give you confirmation that uh, the compound you thought it was is the actual compound. So properties can be uh, calculated through molecular modeling and typical properties are molecular energy, dipole moment, frontier orbitals, etc. Um, and I give you a task, I'm giving you a task in RU Connected after this, is um, in the quiz you'll be asked what properties can be calculated of molecules in molecular modeling. And you might have to do a little bit of looking up to see what in the list is possible to calculate if you've got um, a molecular structure to begin with. Finally, you can also explore activity. How does a molecule behave in the presence of other molecules? Is it reactive? Does it bind to an enzyme? So there are many reasons why you would want to do computational chemistry and molecular modeling. But even this uh, is a little bit diffuse in terms of what molecular modeling is really about. And I like to look at mo molecular modeling in terms of a process. A lot of people come to me and they say, I want to do molecular modeling. And molecular modeling, it's a very difficult question to answer or to help people with because you can't do molecular modeling on its own. You have to do it in some context. So molecular modeling for an inorganic chemist is very, very different to molecular modeling that maybe a medicinal chemist needs to do. Or a physical chemist might be looking at reactivity and the modeling, molecular modeling or computational chemistry do you do is very different to the other two. So molecular modeling is totally useless without a problem or uh, without a context uh, in terms of, of chemistry. So molecular modeling is as diverse as chemistry is. So we've got our fields of chemistry, inorganic, organic, etc. And the modeling around each of these is very different in each case. 
So it's very important that modeling is done in a context and that you have a problem to solve. For instance, you might want to know uh, what what a spectral property is of a particular molecule to be able to relate that to experiment. So you need a problem. The first step of molecular modeling is you need a problem before you even start. Once you have a problem to solve, then you can build a model. Once you've built that model, you can do a calculation. And again, in Aura Connected, I'm going to ask you what sort of things we can calculate. And you need to explore that in some detail. And finally, you analyze results.